Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for partial correlation in SPSS. Taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS. First, I have a variable treatment time, and this represents the number of months that a participant is in a particular counseling program. And then I have two other continuous variables, motivation and satisfaction. And let's assume that these are recorded as t-scores. That is a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And we'll assume that these scores are derived from instruments corresponding to these constructs. So an instrument that measures motivation and an instrument that measures satisfaction. So in this case, we're not hypothesizing that one of these variables causes the movement in the other variable, but rather we want to explore the relationship between motivation and satisfaction. So we could assume that both of these instruments were administered at the end of a participant's time in the counseling program. So that brings us to the concept of controlling for another variable. So we want to look at the correlation between motivation and satisfaction, but we want to control for treatment time because we believe that the treatment time variable could have an effect on motivation and satisfaction. So we want to look at this relationship between motivation and satisfaction while partially out the effect of treatment time. So before we can perform a partial correlation, we want to test for the assumptions of the statistic. So we're going to need two continuous variables that we want to correlate, and we have those, motivation and satisfaction. We're going to want at least one covariate. So we have that here in treatment time, and that's also measured at a continuous level. The variables should be normally distributed and not have any outliers. And we'll check for those two assumptions first. And there should also be a linear relationship between the variables. So a linear relationship would be evident as we compare all the possible pairs of these variables. So first, let's take a look at the normal distribution and outliers and see if, in fact, these variables are normally distributed and if there are any outliers. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. So for the dependent list list box here, I'm going to load all of these variables. I'm going to hold down Control, just select all three and move them over. Under Statistics, by default, Descriptives is checked off. I'm going to add Outliers, click Continue. And then under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, but I will check off Histogram and Normality Plots with Tests and click Continue. Under Options, I'm going to make no changes. I'll click OK here. So when trying to determine normality, we can use a few different statistics. You can see here from the descriptives that we have information, descriptive statistics for treatment time, motivation, and satisfaction. Of the most interest here, in terms of determining normality, would be the skewness and their kurtosis. And we want to look at the absolute value of the skewness and the kurtosis for all three of these variables. There are several guidelines for looking at the skewness and kurtosis in terms of determining if a distribution is normal or not. And the one that I'm going to use is that we don't want an absolute value for the skewness of greater than 0.8 or an absolute value for the kurtosis of 3. So 0.8 for skewness and 3 for kurtosis. And we can see that for each of these variables, treatment time, motivation, and satisfaction, we have an absolute value for the skewness less than 0.8 and an absolute value for the kurtosis of less than 3. Moving down the output, I'm going to move down to tests of normality. So we can see here that there are two tests that were performed, Komogorov smirnov and Shapiro-Wilk. I'm going to interpret the results of Shapiro-Wilk. And you can see there is a Shapiro-Wilk probability value for 
each of the three variables, treatment time, motivation, and satisfaction. And all three of these probability values are greater than 0.05. So I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis and assume that each of these three variables is normally distributed. We will also take a look at the histograms for these three variables. And first we have treatment time and we can see that if we look at the histogram it more or less looks like a normal distribution. It should have a shape like a bell, like a bell curve. And it appears generally to have that shape. As we move down the output we're also going to take a look at the box plot for treatment time and the other two variables. And we're here we're checking for outliers. So we want to make sure there are no points below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker. So we can see here for treatment time no outliers. Moving down to motivation, again looking for a shape that's similar to the bell curve. Moving down to the box plot, no outliers here. And then satisfaction, the histogram, and the box plot, again no outliers. So that takes care of the assumptions regarding normally distributed variables and outliers. But what about the linearity assumption? The assumption that there's a linear relationship between all the possible pairs of variables. So to test that, I'm going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues. I'm going to move over here to scatter dot. And I want to go with matrix scatter and click define. The matrix variables will be these three variables. So treatment time, motivation, and satisfaction. Move them all over to matrix variables list box. I'm not going to make any other changes here. I just click OK. And looking at this graph, you can see that we have a scatter plot for each of the pairs of variables. So in this case we have three pairs, treatment time and motivation, treatment time and satisfaction, and motivation and satisfaction. We have six plots here because the way it's displayed you have for example treatment time in, on the y-axis and motivation on the x-axis but also motivation on the y-axis and treatment time on the x-axis. So we can see it both ways. I'm just going to evaluate the two top plots and the middle plot to the right here. So treatment time and motivation, if we look at these plots, there does appear to be a linear relationship here. The points move from the bottom left to the top right and they don't stray too far from the diagonal that that creates. Looking at treatment time and satisfaction, the same thing, we have a linear relationship. And between motivation and satisfaction, we also have a linear relationship. So these data, these variables, meet the assumption of linearity. So now I'm going to run the partial correlation. I can do it right from this output window. Analyze then correlate and I'm going to select partial and for the variables it's going to be motivation and satisfaction and then controlling for that's going to be treatment time under options I'm going to add means and standard deviations as well as zero order correlations and click continue I'm going to make no changes here for test of significance or display actual significance level. Click OK. And we can see we have the descriptive statistics for these three variables. And then moving down here to correlations, we can see the Pearson's R correlation between motivation and satisfaction, 0.883, motivation and treatment time, 0.791, and treatment time and satisfaction. 0.653. So in this top part, notice it indicates control variables none. So without controlling for treatment time, the correlation between motivation and satisfaction, 
0.883, and it is statistically significant. If we move down to the bottom part, we see that we have a control variable here of treatment time, and now we can look at just motivation and satisfaction while controlling for the effect of treatment time. The correlation between motivation and satisfaction in this instance, 0.792. So the correlation between motivation and satisfaction when controlling for the variable treatment time is a little different than what we saw when we're not controlling for the effect of treatment time, 0.883 to 0.792. But again, in this case here, uh, with the control variable, the result is statistically significant. I hope you found this video on testing assumptions for a partial correlation in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.